On this episode of Game Shack, IIRK throws down the gauntlet with their new Retro Mania game, but will anybody care? At Games tries to make things right with a new contest coming up in a week, and Arcade 1UP announces the final version of Mortal Kombat Legacy. Sort of. All that and more virtual pinball news coming up next. Hey everybody, it's JDV here for EvilGeniusEntertainment.com. Thanks for stepping back by the Game Shack. I appreciate everybody who's been checking out the channel in the last six weeks as we have added gaming to the channel and it seems to be a big hit, so we're gonna keep rolling on with that. Uh, let me talk about the virtual pinball news right off the bat and there isn't much news. I guess the biggest news is the fact that there is no news. I don't think anybody really has gotten any uh, Star Wars games here in the last week, maybe a couple, but it looks like if you had not been given that email notice here uh, from February 8th or whatever, you're not getting it now and we're all apparently going to be getting the major portion of that shipment if you had your pre-order in on March 12th, at least that is still the current word. There's been no apology given, no explanation given, nothing like that from either um, Arcade 1UP or GameStop. So sort of kind of par for the course from them. Um, Toy Shock is not saying anything different. I guess they're still looking at a late March, maybe early April release. They're saying multiple retailers this time. So I guess it would be more than essentially just Walmart, which appears to have been the, the, the big retailer they had last time. Now, they're not saying that Walmart will even have it again. They're just saying multiple retailers. They're not talking about a price increase yet, so that's to the good. I think that game is pretty much a steal at this point for $400, considering how uh, the pricing is on stuff. Well, games, pinball is still available at GameStop. And uh, of course, at Games had their big sale on Valentine's Day. If you didn't get in on that, then you're probably looking at late summer to be able to buy one in a brick and mortar store. And they look like they're gonna be going for the same price as um, the shipping and handling plus the price of the machine if you got in on Appreciation Day. So you won't be saving any money there but that's far from being official and we're a long way away from that date. And of course, there has been no um, further announcements from Arcade 1UP about when we might see uh, large pre-orders available for Attack from Mars or in fact Star Wars or Marvel. So it's sort of, we're kind of just waiting to see what starts to happen here that the first big date, um, should, well, actually that game's waves one through three should be satisfied right around the same time that the Star Wars game is hitting. So it'll be interesting to see if either one of those companies stumbles in that regard. Uh, so I guess the big news is IR Arcade is not thrown in the towel yet, even though I think their sales have been underwhelming, just basically based on the price of their cabinet, which is still $800 for their full-size cab. Now, their Retro Mania cab looks fantastic. <laughs> I mean, even if you're not a giant wrestling uh, type of fan, I just think the, the the cabinet looks great. I think at this point now in the industry, it's very clear that people want to have very identifiable cabinets, win, lose, or draw. They don't want to see the multi-cade approach on these cabinets. I don't really mind the, the multi-cade uh, type thing too much, but of course, once you have one multi-cade branded machine, that's all you want. You want everything else to be, you know, Space Invaders, Miracle Command, whatever the heck it is, whatever it is that you want, you want that specific branding. And that is now very clear, and IR Arcade has heard that, and to their credit, they have now, this is their second major branding of their machine after they've kind of ditched the faux Tron, doesn't look anywhere near as good as Tron, kind of design they had. I think they're Dragon's Lair cabinet is absolutely spectacular, and if I had the dough, I would probably get that cab because I think it looks beautiful. Um, but I can see the appeal of this uh, Retro Mania game, uh, and that's a cool game too because it's a new game, of course, but it's in a style of the old game, but it has some new wrestlers in it, so it's got a little something for everybody if you're into that style of game. 
So that's really good. And I guess there's going to be 16 other games available. They are adding games to their library. Now you still only get, I think, 11 games with the machine and then you have to go online and pick and choose which ones you want. I'm not sure how many free games you get in addition to that 11. Their website needs some work. Now, whoever's doing IR Arcade's website, it, it needs a little TLC. I mean, it's slick enough when you first look at it, but then you're like, why do I have to do all the fighting that I have to? How many games comes with the machine? How many games can I order uh, right now? I mean, they have it kind of broke down, but not in a way that's terribly easy. That's something that they should look at, but it is an exciting thing and it is certain, now, it, it's more competition, I guess, probably for at games than it is arcade one up because of course at games is also a multi-cade game. But the problem for II Arcade, judging by it, some other people have videos on this topic already, and it's pretty clear that people's like, yeah, I'm really interested in that game and that ecosystem, but it costs $800. And that's it. I mean, that's, that is a lot of money um, for any system, number one, particularly in this kind of niche market where a lot of people already have cabinets, have already spent you know thousands of dollars on this stuff. And number two, there are some technical deficiencies on that I, our arcade uh, full-size cab. It only has a 19-inch screen in it. Now, that is better than Arcade 1-Up's 17-inch screen, but it is nowhere near at Games Legendary Ultimate Cabinet of 22 and a half inches. That is a glorious screen and the biggest really in this market segment. And so to be paying that much money, it has basically the same games as at games, but without quite the same level of connectivity and the amount of ways to play games, that is an issue. And also, you know, if you look at their control deck, there's no spinner. I don't think there's a trackball on it. So again, it's, it's a little, it is priced probably too high period, but it's also priced too high based on what the competition is offering, which is really more. I mean, at games is their interconnectivity between their entire eco ecosystem. All of their games and their controllers seem to play nice with each other. You have different, you know, you have the pinball sides on them. Yeah, you do have the trackball. You do have the spinner. You have the wireless controller that's coming out. Um, you have all of these different ways to play games. Bring your own game, CoinOps X. There's that's all kind of stuff that they don't have on IRK, at least that I'm aware of. Now, IRK seems to be aimed more at a person who just wants it to work, out of the box, pay some money, and they have the games that they want. And that's fine. But that is not most people in this segment, you know, unless this game is sitting on the floor of a Walmart, and even then, are you gonna look at the $300 Pac-Man game? Or are you gonna look at this $800 IR arcade game if you are a casual gamer? You're probably going to look at the Pac-Man, if you, assuming you don't have any other games. So they are hurt by pricing. They are hurt by the fact that At Games essentially does the same thing they do, but arguably better with a bigger, better screen and a much bigger cabinet with a more inclusive kind of control panel. Um, all that said, I wish them the best of luck. I do hope that that price drops down to like $600 because I think $800 is just it's not going to fly, at least not with some other kind of killer app on it. I don't know what that app could be, but right now it's it's just not enough for most people uh, to buy that game. The Retromania branded skin, that is going to be available, they're saying, sometime in April, and it is for the same $800 um, that the other full-size cabinet is uh, in the Dragon's Lair. So if you are interested in that cab, you won't be able to order it quite yet. Well, maybe you could pre-order it now. I'm not quite sure about that. I think you can, but you, they won't start shipping until April. Uh, speaking of at games, a little other news on that. You can still buy their arcade or the legendary mini on their website, branded in the Tetris logo. It looks really cool, but it's still available now. Um, a week after their fan appreciation day, which means to me one of two things. One, either there's not as much interest in that cabinet as they thought about, or they thought there would be, or two, they ordered so many of these cabinets that no matter what the interest was, they were never gonna sell out. It could be a little A, it could be a little B, I'm not sure, but I know they haven't sold out, and I think you can buy it for $400 plus $75 shipping. So deliver to your door, 
475 and you're matching a lot of what the IIRK does, except, and I think that this is a decision that has hurt the, uh, that mini unit, is that it only has a one player control panel. Arcade One Up has crammed two players into a very small cabinet right since the beginning. So there was definitely room to put two players on there. And because they haven't, I think that has hurt people who just want to buy that. They don't want to have to, don't assume that they already have a Legends control panel that they can put on there or the standalone decks that they have that you can put on there. They shouldn't have assumed that. And I think that might be hurting sales a little bit on that cab. That or maybe the Tetris branding. I mean, I would rather see it branded in Tetris as opposed to Multicade, but I would, have, I would have liked to have seen it branded in almost anything else other than Tetris. <laughs> it's just, yeah, I like Tetris, but big yellow cabinet in Tetris. Now, there'll be some fans, but apparently not as many as um, they thought. And Arcade 1UP has announced the final version of their Mortal Kombat Legacy game. And it, they're essentially, they've just reverted back to the original art of the first release uh, that they um, put out a while ago now. And it has the same 12 games on it. Now, if you look closely at the art, though, you'll see that there are two raised edges on either side of the control deck. And that's a big no-no for a fighting game, particularly a fighting game that is clearly aimed at adults and realistically adult men. Playing that game, that, that game means, if that happens, it means you're going to have two guys kind of angled at each other on that deck and their elbows and their forearms are going to be rubbing on those lips so to speak hopefully they will fix this in the final version because it's just it's just stupid i mean i don't understand how anybody could think that that is a good idea looks cool bad in reality there's also one other complaint i have about this and that it has a three-player game in the form of rampage and a four-player game in the form of gauntlet it makes no sense to put those games on this machine they don't even really match the theme of the fighting game type machine say well licensing i don't care it's dumb put those games on nba jam put them on um, teenage mutant ninja turtle or you put them on golden axe because that's where they belong and you just make it happen. It doesn't, A, it makes those cabinets a lot more attractive. If you have Gauntlet on Golden Axe, oh, right? If you have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles somehow also on NBA Jam, I know they're never gonna do that, um, but they certainly could have put a Rampage on NBA Jam. That would have made that machine a lot more compelling to somebody like me who's fair to middle in interest into that game, but you put Rampage on it or Gauntlet or both, and now, Okay, now I got something for everybody. I got this cool game, but I also have this kids game on there. And that they haven't done that when they have no ability to upgrade their games at all. So, and they have very few uh, four player, three player decks available. I just don't understand it. It does not make a lot of sense. I would rather have them have those games on this than have it only have 10 games, but there had to be a better solution to it than this. I just, I just don't know what's going on over there right now. Anyway, that wraps up this episode of Game Shack. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, if, you, if I said anything wrong, please correct me down below. If you have any news, please let us know if you've gotten your Star Wars pinball game or if, you've gotten, if you're in waves one through three of your ad game pinball game, let us know. Please give me a thumbs up if you like this show. It really does help. Love each other. And until next time, I'll see you guys in the Game Shack. Mwah! Look, look. Come on. Even Space Invaders doesn't have lifts. Come on. Space Invaders. Shame. Be sure to visit EvilGeniusEntertainment.com for exclusive content, swag, casting call news, and much, much more.